Listen to me, you hillbilly punk who thinks the world's still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat! <laughs> Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> this is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones, obviously under heavy, heavy Masonic influence. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently at war with the mainstream scientific community. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, then you are not very good at the Internet. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And if it is not December 26th, 2017, then you are listening to a rerun. So make sure to catch it live, will you? Uh, if you're looking for something fun to do this spring, go to Flat Earth Convention UK. That website is flatearthconventionuk.co.uk. That is going to be April 27th, 28th, and 29th in London. Also, Kyrie Irving released his brand new top-of-the-line A-grade Nike commercial, where he mentions in not-so-subtle terms that he still believes in Flat Earth with a giant spinning metal gl- or metal flat disc, which is fantastic. So check that out if you get a chance. And rumor has it that Mad Mike will be doing his rocket launch sometime before the NFL Super Bowl. And that's coming up in January. And if anybody is in direct contact with Mad Mike, let him know that I am willing to take his place. Never ask somebody to do something you wouldn't do yourself. I am willing to take his place in that rocket if he's having second thoughts. Happy to climb in that cockpit and get fired over that town. And hopefully not auger into the ground and become a martyr for Flat Earth. But if I do, that's fine too. And with that in mind, all challenges have been revoked except for the Mark Sargent Flat Earth Challenge. This is my personal declaration of war from Flat Earth Against Mainstream Science. I, Mark Sargent, hereby put forth a challenge to any university, foreign or domestic, to debate or discuss the Flat Earth reality. The short version is this. You fly me in, take care of my hotel, and I'll face down any scientific body you put against me. My only debate requirement is that you have someone with a master's degree in a physical science either participating in or supervising the event. Accept this challenge and you'll be treated with respect. If not, then you're just cowards hiding behind empty equations. Subject matter experts are always wanted for this show. If you're willing to talk about Flat Earth, either pro or against, we, you know, when it comes to being a subject matter expert. In fact, let me just rattle them off real quick, shall we? United States Navy missile instructor, 
United States Air Force navigator, Marine Corps sniper instructor, a Navy submarine chief, an Army artillery radar operator, an Australian intelligence officer, an American flight instructor, an industrial engineer specializing in valves and seals, a career surveyor of 32 years, an international shipping expert, a corporate travel agent, an air traffic controller, United States Army master gunner, aviation and ground training combat expert, USDA surveyor of 27 years, a 32nd degree mason in etheric science research, a commercial airline captain, and a commercial airline co pilot, an industrial vacuum expert, and a merchant marine. Just for the heck of it, all these people have come on this show to say that, yeah, you may be onto something with this whole flat earth thing. If you want to go and come on and, and reiterate what they've said, or you want to come on against them, and I mean, not directly against them, you'll have to talk through me, then let me know. You can email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Or you can call me, which is 303-494-6631. It's probably the best number, and then I'll transfer you over to another number because my cell phone service sucks. But at least you can leave a message because, I honestly, I get so many phone calls at this point. It's hard for me. I basically just turn the ringer all the way down and, and don't even pick up calls anymore. I can't. There's just too many people because it always starts out with the same thing. I listen to your stuff and I have a bunch of questions. And it's like, yeah, you know what? You got to go down the road with everybody else. It's part of the journey. It's the journey. It's the adventure. All adventures have hills and valleys, and you have to go through it like everybody else. There's no shortcuts. All right. Tonight is mailbag, of course, because I get a lot of them. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? This one's called, Why Doesn't Anyone Talk About This? Mark, if we did go to the moon, which I know we can't, how on earth weathering, weather, he actually, weathering, even even make it there or back because it's, oh, he's abbreviating some stuff. stuff. Uh, because as soon as they left the planet, they would get left behind in Earth's dust with how fast we were moving through space in four ridiculous directions at four different highly ridiculous speeds. Not just Earth spiraling, spiraling around the sun, but that uh, the moon would be spiraling, spiraling, wow, I never used that word, around Earth. I, I'm going to say rotating. Spiraling doesn't do anything for me. While the sun goes around galaxy, while the galaxy hurtles through space, spinning at the incredible ridiculous speeds. He likes the word ridiculous. That would be an awesome graphic. It, that graphic's out there, by the way, guys. You can you can watch it. It looks the, the solar system looks like a shotgun pattern going sideways through space, which is an amazing thing in itself. I seen the ones that show our solar system rotating around our spiral while traveling through space but i would like to see that again with all the asteroids in both asteroid belts good point uh going around the sun with a few stray asteroids and meteors and not to mention meteor showers not only would astronauts get left behind it would probably get hit by the moon <laughs> good crashing into them or someone else uh, because as soon as they left orbit Earth would leave them and other planets and asteroids would come to them, flying at them so fast and crash into them, probably. So no, there's no way, even if it existed, we couldn't go. Unless we had like warp speed or something. Yeah, good one. So they could even catch back up. Satellites they supposedly send into space to other planets and moon, etc. All you have to do is get it into space and let the planet or moon or whatever come to it. Everyone thinks if our sun is stationary... Uh, everyone sings it as I used to just like the movies and shows uh, make it out like sorry bro it's a long email I could go on and on with this I bet you could thanks for getting the truth out there God bless you brother and that's from a plain earther thank you very much for that this one's called what's this one called 500 miles straight track mark the Volkswagen test track in Erlesen Germany has Five, I think she meant 500 miles. 500 miles, 500 feet? That doesn't sound right. 500 miles of flat, straight track. I wonder if, eh, I don't think that's true. If said, the reason why you can't see to the end is because it follows the curve of the earth. Do we know anyone that Germany, <laughs> they could take a P900 there? Yeah, that's from Sarah Perry. Thank you, Sarah. And that's, a, that's an interesting idea. Have somebody go out to, not, not necessarily just the Volkswagen track, but there's got to be other tracks around there. I mean, the heck, the local tracks here in the United States would probably have some decent or abandoned airport runways would also be very, very good for finding a flat thing. Anyway, this one's called Flat Earth. 
Mark, why would NASA and all the other space programs around the world involving hundreds of thousands of people send, spend trillions of dollars over the last 50 plus years? That wouldn't be necessary if they were trying to keep flat Earth a secret. And what about the alien visitation? The evidence for this is extremely overwhelming, far more so than flat Earth theory. Where are these aliens from? They are very credible witnesses and deathbed confessions for this, yes. I don't see this with the flat earth theory. I can go on and on. Your flat earth theory simply doesn't hold much water. Water, by the way, can sit flat on a globe. Wow. Okay, where do I start with this guy? All right, first off, he, he, the, his opening argument is there's too many people involved. The NASA, there, you couldn't keep it a secret with that many people involved with NASA that would know. And absolutely, which is why you don't tell anybody at NASA. All the wrench turners at NASA, literally 99.99% of the NASA employees don't know anything about anything. Because the only guys that would have to know are the telemetry guys. And by that, if you don't know what telemetry means, look it up. That is the trajectory data. Meaning, you know, it's all it all comes down to the numbers, meaning the math shooting something from here to there. It all comes down to the ballistics and every, nobody else would have to know the, the people that are making the fuel systems for the rocket, the people designing the capsules, the people uh, serving the astronauts coffee on a daily basis while they're training. All these guys, uh, men and women, wouldn't have to know anything. So, no, it's not like the Manhattan Project where you had hundreds of thousands of people building the atomic bomb and nobody had nobody knew. No, this is this is something completely different. So, OK, that takes her to the first one. Second one is which I love here. He's saying, what about alien visitation? He's saying that aliens are more credible than the flat Earth. Which leads me into the very first thing I, I said in, in the, the pref, the, the intro to the Flat Earth Clues, which is uh, your, the conditioning, the denial, which is I literally know. Con here's one of them. I know conspiracy guys that say, say that everything else is possible, including this. He's going aliens are totally legit. Flat Earth is not. Why do you think that? It's because you've been told since you were a child that flat earth is impossible. Flat earth is ridiculous. It's a globe. It's a globe. It's a globe. It's a globe. I could go. I could do this over and over and over again. And you do that for 12 years and you're going to start thinking it's a globe. This is straight out of George Orwell. Right? There are five lights, not four. There are five. And so but that's the second part. His third part, which I love here, is like water, by the way, can sit flat on a globe. Really? Where? Show me where. Show me any sort of experiment where this is possible. Show me an astronaut somewhere that took a globe and stuck water to it outside of the Earth. Show me, show me where that is. He's, he, again, he's just parroting back the, the conditioning. He, he's saying, it's like, look, gravity. That it's, this, this is his answer. That's literally the last line of this email, which is gravity is, is, explains the globe. It's like, wow. Uh, it's, it's a classic example. In one paragraph, he basically just showed you what the conditioning is. Fantastic. And that's from Charles Holloway. And I don't have his email in front of me. Otherwise, I'd have you guys email the guy. All right. This one's called Probably Not Show Fodder. Oh, yeah? I'll be the judge of that. Let's read it anyway. Mark's, Mark, thank you. Unless, again, unless you write me an email and list off in the beginning of the email. Don't put it at the end of the email. Where it's like, this is super secret, you know, by a PS, this is super secret. Don't read on air. Or I could be killed. Don't do that because I generally do not read the email in its entirety the first time. So this one starts out, Mark, thanks for your acceptance on the frontline role. That is the light at the end of the tunnel led you to. I became aware of Flat Earth in about mid-September of this year, which is 2017, which means she hasn't been in it long, at a friend's behest. Boy, you don't use that word very often. I watched one Rob Skiba show on YouTube. Of course, my response was, no way. What are these guys talking about and the like? As a Bible-believing Christian, I hit the holy book. I got out strong, exhaustive passages. I thought I'd approach it from the other direction. I looked for heliocentric proof and found many keywords were not at all in concordance. Theory, seismic, volcano, universe, cosmos, galaxy— sidereal, oh, I don't use that one much, evolve, evolution, eclipse, eclipse, elliptical, globe, orb, sphere, rotate, and rotation. Gravity appears twice in the New Testament, but the meaning is like an altitude, I'm sorry, an attitude of seriousness, being grave in nature. Planet appears only once, 2 Kings 23, verse 5. In Hebrew, planet just means wandering star. 
when I try to look up result, Revolve, I found it not there, but next to where it could have been, where Revolt, Revolting, or Revolted. I found that ironic. I looked up online Enoch 1 and read some of the Luminaries chapters, scary at times. It took about three days wrestling, and I took the leap. Once firm in belief, I had the urge to tell others. That didn't go so well. So here I am, not wanting blood on my hands for allowing others to continue living the lie, but knowing the potential backlashes to come from sharing. I won't turn my back on the truth. I find you humble and very listenable. Right after I found your content, some were already attacking. Thankfully, I saw through that. I note that you steer away from the Bible in the shows I've watched. This isn't a chapter and verse show. But reading between the lines, I get a sense you are Christian. If you grew up in northwest Iowa, I'd nearly bet on it. <laughs> really? My thought is that by turning the focus away from the biblical aspect, you are hopeful to reach a broader audience. Uh, she knows me. You typically say God or creator in the early part of your pitch. I really enjoy the, the email shows. I love how you handle the ones correcting you. Hilarious. All the debate about which model is largely unnecessary. It would be best to make the model as close to God's description as possible. You have likely read the Enoch Luminaries chapters. I have, actually. Again, thank you, sir. May God continue to bless and keep you. Patrick Nash, Cumberland, Tennessee. So I was wrong. I thought initially it was from Jennifer, but it was from Patrick. So thank you, Patrick, for that. So he knows me so well in this case. Moving on. This one's called Article Admitting Land-Based Radar for Airplanes. Hey, Mark, it was awesome to meet you at the FEIC, and my wife and I had an amazing experience. She went with me not as a true flat earther. She left a full flat earther. We found the flat earth people to all be the most genuine, open, and enjoyable people. Thank you for what you have done to be a part of this, whatever we are calling it. The flat earth awakening? I found this article to be interesting. It talks of how the FAA was formed. About halfway into it is a paragraph which talks about the oceans being a dead space with no radar coverage. And this article, interesting to document. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to 2018. That's from Rich. And the article, let me click on it real quick. Uh, I don't know. I can't. I don't see a date stamp on this. But it, yes, I do. November, November 2017. How a terrible plane crash over the Grand Canyon changed history. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. So, yeah, check that out if you get a chance. Doesn't surprise me, though. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, your Flat Earth theory sounds great, but there is no way our government could so well contain such a secret. Just look at the Kennedy assassination. Couldn't keep that under wraps. Most Americans know Oswald couldn't have acted alone, if at all. I've never heard any deathbed confessions from any astronauts, pilots, or the many thousands that would have to be involved in such a cover-up. Plus, what intelligence would perpetuate such an elaborate hoax, and for what purpose? I saw your videos, and I'm sorry to tell you that I am far from convinced. Thanks, Chuck. Otherwise known as Charles. And yeah, same same sort of thing here that, that the other one um, shot at me, which is there's this isn't like Kennedy. Kennedy is a secret. Eventually, you can bury in the desert somewhere. You know, he there's some. Yeah, yeah, of course. Lots of people know that Kennedy was shot by somebody else that wasn't Oswald. And you just shot the asset. You know, you 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 set up a guy, a fall guy. I mean, if there isn't a better example of a fall guy, please tell me. And then you, uh, once the fall guy's there, then you, you, you kill him off and who knows, maybe even kill the guy that killed, killed Oswald. But there, the, the problem with the candy thing was there were so, even though we found a lot of the problems that, that went on with that, if you haven't seen JFK, the movie yet, please buy it is Oliver, Oliver Stone's opus. It is so fantastic, especially the, uh, 10 minute narrative, uh, sort of deep throat, uh, montage thing where uh, towards the end where Kevin Costner is getting the all the all the dirt from one of the guys one of the, the government ops that, that knew about everything that was going on there but as much as he revealed you know about everything that was going on as much as as much was uh, hang on one second there's studios writing me and it's no big deal I think everything's fine and and as long as he can hear me, 
Contacts. Show contacts. I think everything's cool. I think you, I think everything's fine. We'll know in a few minutes when it goes to the break anyway. So, um, oh yeah, if you haven't uh, if you haven't checked out the JFK thing, as much as we was revealed to us, how many things were hidden? For example, the the JFK limousine that which was brought into the shop immediately, and all the it was completely re- replaced and restored and probably destroyed entirely. But you know that that the the limousine itself should have been a crime scene. Part of the part of the evidence group with all the, with the bullet holes and and all the the blood and spatter. I mean, a CSI team could have determined everything that went on just by the limousine, and that thing was hidden in two seconds. Uh, Jackie Onassis, otherwise known as Jackie uh, Jackie Kennedy, she was sworn to secrecy up until her death, and she kept her mouth shut, and she didn't talk about it to anybody. She was she was literally sitting, she was touching elbows with the guy that was shot, the president. So you know that was that was kept secret. There were tons of things with the JFK which we will never ever see. It was much, yeah, a lot of people we know, of course, but we don't know for absolute certain. Uh, so don't say that the Kennedy thing got out from underneath them because it really didn't. You know, yeah, sure they they created the Warren Commission, but that was run by Gerald Ford, who ended up being president. Uh, you know, every yeah, the Kennedy thing, not no operation out there got away from them to the point where people were rioting in the streets. 9-11 was about the closest thing you could get, and the Internet helped that along. But this is bigger than that. So, sorry. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off track. The point is, plus, if he, he, the, the guy here in this email, he says, plus what intelligent, intelligence what would perpetuate such an elaborate hoax? Oh, I don't know, men in power. This is this is a smoking man's meeting that is very, very short. And he the guy obviously didn't didn't sink in uh, some of the flat earth clues. I would recommend this guy rewatch the clues because I laid it out in pretty good detail what was going on there. So anyway, let's go back to this. How about uh, this one? It's called structure of the dome. Hi, Mark. I'm a flatter. I don't know if I love like that term flatter. People are calling themselves flat, you know, flatter, flathead, flat earther. You know, flat Earth community member, flat Earth member, whatever. What do you call it? I don't know. I mean, I suppose flatter is okay, but it's not flattering. Uh, see what I did there? Anyway, I'm a flatter from Scandinavia, 54 years old. Been on the case from 2015. I followed you a long time, and now I want to give you a bomb. About never heard before. I found out the function of the dome, and that is bulletproof, but never revealed before. I cannot create CGI, so I can send it to you some other way. I give you the rights for this, and you won't regret for answering me. Guys, just send it to me. <coughs> Don't give me a cliffhanger thing. Sorry, I need a drink of water after that one. Don't give me a cliffhanger. I get those emails all the time, and you guys probably have heard me answer them, which is, I've got the greatest secret, the one most fantastic thing, and we'll tell you right after these commercial messages. It's like, no, no, don't, don't do that. Just send it to me. I, I don't don't go fishing with me. It's, I'm I'm generally not going to bite. That's a fishing reference, by the way. Okay, this one's called "Traveling to Antarctica." Mark, in the flat Earth clues and subsequent interviews you have done, you state that nobody actually goes to Antarctica. All right, I will correct him even before I read the very next sentence, which is: I didn't say that nobody goes to Antarctica. You want to go ant- to Antarctica tomorrow? Uh, I think in American dollars, it costs you about $10,000 to, to go there. And you can have go to the peninsula and have your pictures taken with penguins. As a corporation, you cannot go to Antarctica. I mean, you cannot set up a shop any, anywhere. Uh, and that means any country for any amount of money. That's what I was talking about. I was very clear on this. Anyway, reading. Lately, however, you seem to have conceded that people who want to travel there have, in fact, gone there. No, I've always said that. Literally since day one, I've always said that. Uh, and your emphasis has been on corporations not being allowed to go. Yes, that's what I just said. What has made you alter your stance? It is not altered. It is literally in the clues from February 2015. I've been under the assumption that people who say that they traveled to Antarctica merely went to one of the many islands surrounding it. Yes, they have. Which Admiral Byrd said were considered part of Antarctica on the Chronoscope television show. And that no tourists are actually allowed on what is, I thought, the mainland of Antarctica. Darren and La Crosse, Wisconsin. No, no, you can spend the money and you can go inland. You will be supervised. You will not be allowed to roam free. 
but you can go to Antarctica. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the Antarctic Treaty doesn't cover tourism. In fact, they kind of encourage tourism in some way, although the the natural negative reinforcements of Antarctica uh, mean that nobody wants to go there because it's it's really cold. Uh, but you no, know, you can go as a tourist. Absolutely, as a corporation, you can never go ever, 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 ever. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You could have a billion dollar company. And if you want to go to Antarctica and set up shop, you will be shut down. In fact, you're not even allowed to petition it until the year 2041. That's a long, it's the only treaty that's never been broken ever. 1959 Antarctic Treaty. Look it up if you get a chance. So Darren in La Crosse, Wisconsin, where I had a family reunion back in the 90s. No, you are wrong. This one's called No Subject. <laughs> It's called No Subject from from Luke. Mark, I need answers. <laughs> that's literally three words. It's got to be the shortest email ever. I, I didn't even, well, that's fantastic. I need answers. Well, they're they're out there. I don't even, if you're, you can't send, I appreciate short emails. I really do. But you got to send me something. Like, okay, what did you watch? If you need answers, did you watch the clues? Did you watch somebody else's video? How'd you get my email address? Although I have no doubt that, you know, it's been a month since this thing, uh, since this guy wrote the email that he, um, I'm sure he's got some of the answers by now. This one's called, oh boy, can I get this one in? Yeah, yeah, I can get this one in. I, we got a little time. Uh, it's called Flight Route Puzzle. Dear Mark, I'm confused with the flight route. Why does a plane fly across the globe from Japan to the United States? If the globe map is fully mapped, considering if the globe is round, if we curl the map, Japan and the United States will be neighbors at the back of the foil. Why don't the plane fly from the back? What is at the back of the regular round earth map? Regards, Ato Cell from India. Ato or Ato, I have no idea where you're going with this one. Uh, if if we curl the map, Japan and the U.S. He's taking the globe map. You can't. Well, one, you can't start with the globe map and then try to convert it into the AE map. Not not physically. It, it doesn't work out. I mean, every, everybody's tried this for years. If you take a globe and you, and you peel off all the globe stuff, it it makes this weird shape that's almost unfoldable. To, and, and you can't really put the pieces together and sorry so anyway uh, we're gonna go to break here for a few minutes and come back don't go anywhere Initiating the truth frequency. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, and it is Mailbag Night, uh, where you guys just email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will read them on the air, like I'm doing right now. This one is called Satellites? Question mark? Mr. Sargent, disclaimer, I am an atheist. But I believe in science and the globe model, but I am intrigued by what you see as evidence for a flat earth. I'm an average person with no connections to any agency that could be hiding a flat earth. I'm an active duty soldier of 18 years, amateur astronomer, and family man. My question for the flat earth theory is what are the satellites we see in the sky at night? There are multiple programs designed by amateur groups that could not be associated with any vast conspiracy that predict the appearance of various satellites in the ISS. I use them frequently while sitting in my hot tub at night to see what streaks of light 
we can expect for the night. There is another website that predicts ISS solar and lunar transits for your location. The transit footprints on the ground are so small that being in the wrong spot by more than one half mile means you will not see it. I've used it once so far with success and took a series of pictures through my telescope. My shutter isn't too fast, so I only got five shots as it transited over 1.8 seconds. My focus was also off a little bit. There are no sunspots for me to get a good focus during the transit. I personally didn't see it, just mashed the shutter button and prayed it worked, and it did. If the sun is either a projection or on a track, what is the object I took a picture of, and how is it only visible at that point on the ground rather than everywhere? I've not been able to find any answers of this online. I apologize if this has already been addressed. Thank you for your time, Blake Furman. And he shows me a thing on transitfinder.com with a picture of the sun with something going in front of it. It's like, look, it is part of a giant display system. Uh, it's, that's where I'm going to start here. And that is currently our technology is more or less limited to what what can be seen at night. So you go into a planetarium, we can display stars and all the fun constellations and the moon and the waxing and waning crescents and blood moons and even comets. We can do those in the night sky with old, this is old technology, you know, from back in the day when planetariums were used on the weekends for showing like laser Pink Floyd and laser Led Zeppelin, that sort of stuff. So this technology has been around for us. For, and you know, imagine what we can do now. If we converted those planetariums to use like whatever the LED technology is, OLED or XLED or whatever the new one is, in 8K, imagine what we could do right now if you, if you spent you know, a few million bucks on, on the ceiling of a current planetarium. We can do that right now. In fact, I, I put out a video recently. I think it was the, the company was called Colux believe which mit, which they have now designed flat panel monitors that can simulate uh uh oh boy sun oh boy i can't i can't think of it sunroofs and uh, skylights oh wow geez that, that that totally threw me for a second there's skylights in a ceiling so it, you you've heard the old construction saying as as useful as a skylight in a basement you can put skylights in basements now all it is is a flat panel television that can absolutely simulate a sun penetrating an atmosphere and it's blinding with a blue sky behind it. And they've had people, what they've done is they've gone up into buildings, like not to the top floor, like the second floor or the third floor down, and they've installed these skylights. And you can, and they've had people walk underneath them and absolutely will fool them. The people will look up, just glance, they'll say, oh yeah, it's a sunny sky. I look at, you're like you're looking through a glass ceiling. And we can do this right now. So do not tell me that what you know what you're what you're proposing here is impossible. We're we're at that stage right now where uh, you know although our civilization will probably collapse before then, but we're at the point where we can start simulating some of the really high end crap. As we and I thought that I thought that particular technology wasn't going to be ready for a while, and it is right now. Anyway, sorry. Uh, let's see. Was there anything else he said about this? No. Uh, so, and, and honestly with someone like this, an amateur astronomer, he's kind of lost anyway. There's nothing, not much I can do for this guy because amateur, amateur astronomers are already, yeah, yeah, they're not full blown. They don't have a, a master's or a PhD in astronomy or astrophysics, but they might as well be They're They're like a, a space groupie where they absolutely believe wholeheartedly in star Trek and star Wars. The, the physical properties of transwarp space and light speed, they believe every aspect of it. It is their gospel. So not much I can do for him. I mean, I can tell him, like, look, we can do this. But he's – not much I can I – can, I, can, I can kind of show him the way. I can put the idea in his head, but I don't think it's going to get much in the way of traction because he's, he's too far along. And I, I've said this since day one. Anyone that's got a master's degree in a physical science or higher – in a physical science, be it astronomy or astrophysics or geology or hydrology or whatever it is, the, the doctrine is just too far in their head. And they're just going to have to listen to mainstream and hopefully they'll get something out of it. Moving on. <clears throat> this one's called Evidence of the Dome. Hello, Mark. Hope you enjoyed a wonderful Thanksgiving celebration. Take a look at this video taken somewhere in our far northern climates, possibly Scandinavia. What would make the sun cause such a spectacle 
reflecting off of something, perhaps a dome, cheers. And yeah, what he's talking about is like a, a massive sun dog phenomena. And Jeffrey Grupp from Zeteticism.com has covered this at, at extensive lengths. So if you get a chance, this is from, uh, let's see, didn't sign it, but I'm going to go with just whoever the, the email address was from. It was from Audrey. Uh, go to, in fact, you know what, maybe I'll just put that in my list of things that I have to respond to. So, Audrey, you're going to get an email back. I'm just going to send her to, Zet- 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 wow, tongue twister, zeteticism.com and have her peruse through his collection of videos. Some great stuff there. And and what but what he's saying is, just so you know, is that the sun dogs and all those weird mirroring ph- phenomena is because there is a light source that is reflecting off of uh, some sort of surface, a reflective surface. So it may not even be an omnidirectional or a directional light source that is the sun. It's sort of like he was he was toying with the idea that maybe if you take a magnifying glass. Uh, from the sun and you can create a little pinpoint of light on the ground that you can burn things like paper well what if you could that remember that that pinpoint of light is really really tough to look at because you're looking at really a, a tiny tiny version of the sun in terms of lumens and what if that's what we're talking about here is that you're projecting that the light source is actually from com- coming from something else and it, that it's condensing down into this tiny point and that tiny point is the sun that we're seeing and that the actual energy source is coming from somewhere else. Anyway, just a thought. This one's called NASA rocket video proving flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I found a link to an old NASA rocket launch from eight years ago where the vessel supposedly achieves orbit. Ironically, the horizon is flat the entire journey. If this rocket actually achieved the altitude claimed, then they have inadvertently proven themselves wrong. Regards, Jeff Frazier. And that video is, wow, it's got a million views, and it's from 2009, and it's called Inside a Rocket from Takeoff to Orbit. External cameras in HD. Yeah, it would have been one of the early HD things from 2009. And yeah, yeah, that looks about right. It's got 4,000 comments. Who posted that thing? 999. Metal ME. The guy's only got a thousand subs, but he's got a million views on this thing. Uh, of course, it took him eight years to do it, almost nine years. Wow. This one's called Mind Bending. Thanks a lot, Mark. Okay, so I am currently hooked on your flat earth videos on YouTube and find my brain trying to absorb, imagine, reconcile all the factors you bring up and present. It certainly is a fascinating thing to contemplate. Wow. I went to this website, worldatlas.com slash webimage slash country slash an.htm. Oh, Antarctica. To read up on what was written about Antarctica. One part said the population, officially none. But governmental research stations are populated with small groups of scientists all the time. In addition, during the 2011-2012 season, nearly 417,000 tourists visited the continent is that true as far as you know that scientists are there and tourists visit there all the time i thought no one was allowed down there oh my god does this people kill me that they you know and i know it's easier said than done i I don't want to be preachy here but look listen to the stuff and and the people that listen to the clues more than once they totally get it but you don't just serve don't multitask if you're going to try to listen to the clues because it's not what i said i said yes tourists can go down there i even put pictures of people with penguins and crap like that you just aren't allowed to roam free so yes tourists down there all the time well four hundred thousand in a year is not a lot but that's still better than nothing you know and that's usually people that are out in rafts so anyway open to more thanks for your work and that's from Lori r in upstate new york so thank you Lori. but she'll get it eventually i know she will This one's called Planets. Hi, Mark. I don't seem to find the mention of planets in the Bible. Yet they are carved in ancient rock, etc., around the world, as as well as men in spacesuits and what looks like space helmets. What is your take on that? New believer in flat Earth, Lee. That's an interesting point. The, the planets, of course, you know, they're just describing what amateur astronomers would describe now. I mean, if you grab that one guy we just had from a few emails ago and said, hey, amateur astronomer, draw what you just saw. 
He draws something that he thinks looks like a sphere, which is fine. People in spacesuits, though, think about it. Spacesuits don't just protect you from what we consider as space. They would more protect you from biological agents. Because remember we, how most of the Native Americans died in this country. They died from disease. And they were just being exposed to the diseases from the European continent. So wearing a spacesuit, and we've seen this in different science fiction things, biological that's that's the big key here. You want to protect yourself from indigenous problems. You don't want to catch a you know something that is the common cold. Can I think? In fact, I'm pretty sure that was the the thing from War of the Worlds. Supposedly, this advanced techno technological race which wiped us out in a very short period of time opened up their doors, and it's like <laughs> they died because uh, because of just the air that we were breathing. That was, that was it. And what they wouldn't have tested that their technology wouldn't. I'm sorry. That's a plot hole. I hate plot holes. Love good writing, hate plot holes. That was one of them. So if you want to know why there's a lot of people from other civilizations roaming around with space helmets, that's a good reason. Or you use drones like grays from what we can tell grays don't really have any thing that they, they can get sick from. Uh, they, they're, they're pretty much just drones like, like fleshy robots. So anyway, I digress. I can go into other things. If I get off track and go into the weeds, don't take it personally. Okay, and that was from Lee. Uh, this one's called Watch the Downsizing, trailer number two on YouTube. And yes, Mark, hey, seeing this, just thought, wouldn't it be crazy uh, if this is the current situation right now? This may be the future. Who knows? I thought it was interesting. And yeah, it's a it's an interesting movie concept. I have not seen the movie, but you can watch the trailers, and it's called Downsizing with Matt Damon uh, about how to save resources, you just shrink people, which would kind of fall in line with the earlier versions of this world. I mean, think of it. Remember the whole, there are no trees on flat earth where there were giant trees. And then after that, there were giant lizards. I do believe in the giant lizards, otherwise known as dinosaurs. And everything seemed to get smaller and smaller. We, we've all heard of giant humans, you know, the whole David and Goliath thing. You know, where, where It seems like we've, the, the, the builders of this world tended to keep miniaturizing things like we used to do with electronics. Uh, in fact, I've got what here in my drawer. Uh, remember the, uh, I don't know, if it's, it's uh, quite a few years old now, but the original iPod shuffle, you know, about the size of a pack of matches. Imagine showing that to somebody. Remember, because I'm older, I was I was one of the guys that actually owned a Walkman One, a version one from Sony back in the uh, the early '80s, which was huge by comparison. It was the size of a, a medium paperback book. You know, it was it wasn't just big enough to put it in a cassette recorder. I mean, these things were. It was the first version, Walkman One. First guys to come up with this crap. Imagine going to Sony with an iPod Shuffle and throwing it on the table and saying, "Oh yeah, by the way." This thing holds potentially a thousand songs, whereas yours is limited to what? What's on both sides of the cassette, which would be less than 20. It can play them faster. It can change songs faster. It's shockproof. It's completely durable by comparison. You could drop it on the ground. Your sister can step on it with her shoe. Things going to survive. Short of throwing it out of a car and dragging it behind a car for a while, but thing's pretty much bulletproof. Imagine the, the technology. That, that we're working on. So yeah, if um, when it comes to, you know, downsizing this world, what a great way to extend resources would be by just uh, shrinking everybody. Uh, there is, a, of course, a, a bad side to that, which is you have to have complete, basically everybody has to be shrunk down because if most of the population is shrunk down, then you've got giants walking around the earth and can you really trust them? I don't know. I don't know if you could or you'd have to come up with some weird tricky thing to do that. And, and nobody would do that for that purpose alone. Whereas you don't want to feel small. If everybody is, if everybody gets shrunk down simultaneously, it would have to be a unanimous decision because otherwise you would have literally giants walking around the planet and nobody would trust these, the giants. Nobody would. So anyway, but check out the movie if you get a chance. It's kind of a dark comedy from what I can tell called Downsizing Matt Damon. All right. <clears throat> this one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I was intrigued by your idea of Flat Earth. Looking at the picture where Australia and South America are so far apart on your Flat Earth diagram baffles me because it's actually quicker to fly to South America from Australia than Europe or America, and they seem to be closer by far on your Flat Earth map. Can you please explain that, Elliot? 
I've got to reread this. Looking at the picture where Australia and South America are so far apart. Yeah, they're so far apart. And you're flat earth baffling because it's actually quicker to fly to South America from Australia than Europe or America. What? I don't even understand that. No, no. If you look at the flat earth map, Australia and South America are a complete opposite ends of the map. And the only way you can take a shortcut is to hug the coastline as best you can. You can't take this roundabout thing over the ocean because you would you'd run out of gas. You'd have to cut across the, the land masses as quickly as you can. So I do not know what Elliot's seeing. So hopefully, Elliot, if, you, if you're listening to this, clarify for me because I, you're saying the opposite of what I was saying. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth Imploding. Hi, Mark. Paul here from Montana. I am disgusted by the backstabbing, backbiting, and nastiness taking place in the movement. Eric DeBay has a nasty parody about you and Patricia. I have lost all respect for him. Jaronism has a nasty video bashing Dean Odell. Even ODD has lost it. Why can't these people just keep their big mouths shut and stick to the issues at hand? What a way to sink the movement. Sorry, I just need to vent this to someone. Paul. <clears throat> yeah, part of it, you can blame part of it on just, just straight up comp competition. Especially in this country. Everybody, we, we made everything into a competition and we love drama. Uh, if you, you think that's not true, look at all the reality shows that are out there. And they're all based on drama. In fact, reality shows, the, even the, the boring ones, the, like cooking shows, now they've added drama to it. You know, like, you've got to cook this thing in under 10 minutes with just a paring knife and an iron skillet. And, you know, just a stick and a chewing gum wrapper. You gotta, you gotta, you, they, they always amp up the drama because people, uh, they crave it. They love it. I don't so much, but I know a lot of people do. And so that's that's the big one. The other thing is that look, it's a it's a dysfunctional family. A lot of people don't get along with others. Eric, who knows what Eric's doing? Although his channel was destroyed recently by YouTube, mostly for hate speech because of his Hitler stuff. And Jaron going after Dean Odell. I mean, it's his right if he if he wants to. You know, hopefully, those two will will patch things up by then. I mean, Dean Odell hates me. And I had breakfast with a guy out of the conference. I don't know why he hates me. Do not. I never said a bad word. About, I don't see a bad word really about anyone. ODD, he backed out of the conference and he was replaced by somebody else. And don't know what's going on with that guy. I'm trying to avoid the drama. I'm trying to stay as far away from it as I can. It's a distraction. Plain and simple. I do not like it. I do not crave it. I like my drama compartmentalized. I do, you know, I like it in certain doses. I like, you know, like a movie. You get a movie drama. You, the drama begins when the movie starts. It ends when the movie ends. That's it. And then you can kind of recap what thing, things, you know, after, after the fact. But I don't like, and I do not like being forced into drama. That's the big one for me. It's like, look, you can, you can ask me to get involved, but do not for a second try to force me into it because I will just shut you down. It's one of my gifts. Anyway, thank you for that, Paul. This one's called Romstein America. Hi, Mark. Happy holidays. Every time I see a video with NASA, uh, I have to send it to you. This group is banned from playing in the U.S. Yeah, it's Romstein or Romstein. R-A-M-S-T-E-I-N. And the video he's talking about is We Are All Living in America. I think he spells, they spell America A-M-E-R-I-K-A. -E and I actually, for a while, I included it in just the video part of it, not the audio part, until finally the, I started getting uh, little things saying that they were going to block the video on some of my older Strange World episodes. They haven't gotten all of them. They just got some of them. Where uh, the reason why I included it was they went and went to an abandoned warehouse in Germany and created what they thought was an exact replica of the Apollo missions in terms of lighting and texture and all that stuff. And it was not that hard for them to do. They just blacked out a warehouse and then brought in a whole bunch of, of ash, made it the, the identical color, and then bought the uniforms. I don't know how they convinced those guys. They actually called up the, the uniform company that built those uniforms, uh, the space suits, for the Apollo program and ordered the same suits because apparently it's not classified material anymore. And <clears throat> had the astronauts wear those without the helmets – and it looked spot on. I mean, spot on. The lighting was perfect, which is why I included it in quite a few Strange Worlds. So if you haven't gotten a chance, check it out. Look up the, the Romstein. If you don't like the music, just turn the music off. It's called uh, We're All Living in America. And it's really kind of about how America's media influences everything. 
uh, one of my favorite lines of that video was, um, <laughs> they said, Coca-Cola and sometimes war. And that's pretty much it. You know, they, they mentioned, you know, Mickey Mouse uh, with, with a can. And they're saying, look, the, the, the United States has indoctrinated the world into a lot of different things with their movies and their television shows. I knew that when I was over in Egypt. I, I got to mention this real quick because I, people were flocking around me when I was at, I was at the temple, the, the Queen's Temple. And I was asking one of the guides, like, what, what the heck? Why are there, why are the kids? Sw-? And they go, oh, it's the first time they've seen an American up close outside of television. And I go, so what? And they go, well, you know, everyone, all Americans are, are like the shows we see on television. And I go, what shows? And apparently over in Egypt and the Middle East or third world countries, the shows that they let get played over there, very clever what our, our government does. Uh, the, they were doing, if you guys remember some of these shows back in, I know it kind of dates me, Dallas, Dynasty, Dynasty, Falcon's Crest, uh, all those shows that portrayed all these families in the United States as these amazing millionaires living in these giant mansions. And that's what they watched. And so they would, they, the, you imagine being a kid and watching this, you know, maybe, you know, with subtitles and you're watching, it's like, wow, look at their homes, look at their cars, look at their glamorous clothing. And that's what they, and so, but yeah, by the time, I mean, they were swarming around me and I'm just this guy walking around in the, in the hot sun and they, then their second language that they were trying to learn was English because the tourist dollars, most of the tourist dollars come from the United States. Apparently when we go abroad, we spend the money compared to a lot of other countries, at least over there that don't tip and don't buy a lot of frivolous crap. We do though all the time. Anyway, so that was it. Uh, this one's called no subject. Hey Mark, check it out. I find it amusing that this conference was canceled due to lack of interest while the FEIC 17 was a huge success. And yet what they're talking about was the atheist convention in Australia was canceled. Sure. Why not? That doesn't surprise me at all because when it comes to flat earth, try to be an atheist and be a flat earther at the same time. Very, very tough. And I know there's some people who say, no, no, you can be an atheist. I'm going, really? Eventually, you're going to have to boil it down and say, okay, so the flat, enclosed, domey type structure, that's perfectly organic and happened accidentally. It's like, if you're going to go down that road, why don't you just stick with geocentrism or heliocentrism? Why, why would you even be a flat earther if you're going to say, oh, yeah, I believe in a flat, enclosed world, but it, was, it happened by accident? Come on. Nobody's going to buy that. That's why I, I still have yet to meet a true flat earth atheist. I haven't. Unless you're just just dead set on being uh, an atheist and being a rebel against the globe. It's just I don't even know if I have a name for that. Uh, I think we have time for one more for the break. This one's called My Father and the Flat Earth. Hey, Mark. So my 81 year old father was in the Navy and did signaling to other boats and was conditioned by the Navy to believe that he had to shine those lights up in the sky so that ships over the horizon would be able to see it. That is what keeps him clinging to the globe. Is there something to show him to prove that he was lied to? Sarah Perry. Yeah, Sarah, absolutely there is. There was a, a experiment that was done just a couple of weeks ago where a guy went out to a lake. I can't remember if it was in Utah. It's on my thing. All you have to do is type in um, flat earth water experiment. Or um, if you look at my channel, I think I posted it in the last month where it was shot in you type in freezing temperature, flat earth freezing temperature. You'll find it. Uh, cause it'll be on my channel where the guy literally, it was getting down to like 30 degrees, 20 something degrees. And he set his camera. I think it was maybe three feet off the water on the ice and his girlfriend or wife on the other end of the lake, which was seven something miles away. She literally, cause the lake was just starting to freeze. So the atmospheric effects were way, way down. She put her flashlight literally on the ice. I mean, literally smack dab on it. There was no elevation or anything. And he could zoom in right on it. Absolutely could see it. And that thing should have been hidden by a whole bunch of curve. That's what I'd show to your 81-year-old father if I had a chance. Because that was a fantastic experiment. Again, the, it seems like the cold temperatures really redu reduce the atmospheric effects like atmospheric lensing and Fata Morgana and stuff like that. The, the cold temperatures like, yeah, so shooting across an ice lake or a lake that's just about freezing, that's, that's the way to go from what I can tell. Shoot a laser across one of those. You'll have a, a much better luck. And anyway, so we're going to go to a second break and we'll come back and we'll do more stuff. This was part two of four. I'm going to do part three here in just a minute. Don't go anywhere. Hi. 
My name is Ella. You must unite what has been set aside. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. And that little song was by Chip Baker. He called it Major Kong. And all the little audio clips, if you hadn't recognized them already, are from Dr. Strange Wolf, which was directed by Stanley Kubrick, one of my favorite Kubrick movies, I think, next to 2001 A Space Odyssey, which is also great. So it's Mailbag Show, Day After Christmas. And we are going right to it. This one's called Hello from Columbia. Hi, Mark. Good morning. I don't know if it's morning, but he's probably in the same time zone I am. I've been, I have been seeing your videos. Oh, boy, it's going to be one of these. And they are very instructive. I'm watching all these material on YouTube, and my mind is eager of new knowledge. I'm going to read it as is, guys. I'm not going to correct them. In fact, is old knowledge but new for the people that was indoctrinated on the other fake reality. Before I was able to reach the first Flat Earth video, I was receiving to say that in a way, thoughts on my mind about different realities from actual one. I wrote a theory about the human life is recycled called La Vida Humana Se Resilia Teoria. Human life is, oh, I should, probably should have read the non-Spanish one. Human life is recycled theory. Back in March of 2012, this talks about how we never leave the earth. Our structure is used over and over again. Oh, I like it already. Much longer before my first flat earth interest. I did some other writings, but later in August of 2016, I participated in a contest for Kindle. I wrote a thesis. It talks about a couple in a future world, a very smart couple that works in an experiment to win the best prize in the world, being allowed to leave earth and explore space. Of course, they never went, but while they did the experiment, they found something interesting. They created a flat world with AI living on it. After a lot of situations, the AI inside grow up, at, they created life, and this new life became smart enough to reach the dome and found a way out. And they look what they did and decided to talk to them, but while this was happening, the AI created their own flat earth with another AI inside it. Okay, I... I love, I love this, but and I'll finish this. And of course, you guys know where I'm going with this. And they also grow up enough to leave the dome. And guess what? These two created flat earth inside the earth. So it became a, um, a drost effect and things became very weird. No right end for the book. A little book. It's only in Spanish, but I did you a summary after this. I, a year, I think, started to watch flat earth videos. And the one I saw today made me think to write to you. This one, they are hiding God with the biggest lie ever. Flat earth clues. Not because it's the best. Really? Why not? But because I hear your voice saying that anyone can email you. Oh, okay. I want to find more, but do you think this is dangerous? I've seen a lot of videos, and it seems all the people are quite okay. But I would like to feel a little more secure. Also, I want to share something with you. Some questions, in fact, maybe you already know, and you can answer me. There are so many mistakes in NASA videos that it seems to me they are doing it on purpose. Yep. I think so, because you eventually you have to appeal to the lowest common denominator. You've got to make sure the average person on the street finds the mistakes. Uh, are they so prepared to confront the masses that they even don't care about the quality of their videos? Yes, I think they're at that stage now. And also, how big is this lie that they already have like a franchise to face fake spacewalks, moon landings and satellite launches? It's pretty big because it looks like a McDonald's for space. <laughs> it's good. Thank you in advance, and thank you for your videos, John Harold 
from Colombia. And w- the, the first part, it, it, of course, very interesting. And I don't know if he's watched any American movies, but uh, uh, The 13th Floor was was probably the, the most uh, the, uh, uh, accurate of the description that he came up with, which was uh, a simulation within a simulation. That's what The 13th Floor was, was done. And that was in, uh, done in 98, 99, back when computers were not that great. Uh, we're, a lot, we're a lot better now than we were then. And that was, in fact, the 13th floor was based on a 1975 movie called, um, uh, 1975 movie called uh, uh, World on a Wire that was done in Germany. And that was really, that was an awesome, talk about ahead of its time. That was definitely one of those. I mean, the fact that you could do a German virtual reality movie and uh, they didn't, they didn't even try to do to remake it until the the late 90s 20 something years later so that's why i mean interesting i i'm i'm thinking he almost he probably he couldn't have seen it because otherwise i think he would have mentioned it because it's a it's a blatant uh, in fact it was uh i think world on a wire which was the german movie was based on a 1960s book if i'm not mistaken called simulcron 3 which again it, it it we were we naturally tend to go that way anyway where it's like, okay, if, if we raised in a terrarium little human beings, would they get a chance to raise their own little human beings in a terrarium or however they want to do it, be either real or simulated? And that's what he's talking about. So, sorry, I kind of drugged that out too long. Probably shouldn't have. All right, let's move on to something else, shall we? How about, oh, this one's called Amish Flat Earthers. I'm intrigued. Mark, can you try to work out an interview with an Amish person? <laughs> That's the first time anyone's ever asked me that. Do we know what their stance is on the globe? Obviously, they are not indoctrinated with the vile public school teachings, internet, movies, cartoons, Facebook, and obviously NASA indoctrination. I would love to get some input from you if you know what their stance is. An interview with some of them would be nice. Also, what about American Indians? Thank you for your input and God bless. Jonathan from Ohio. And yeah, uh, I think the Amish, in fact, I think there was a movie. If you look up uh, in something on um, IMDb, I'm pretty sure that there is an Amish movie along those lines. Because technically, if they had no exposure to the outside world, I would think the Amish might take a flat earth stance. Why wouldn't they? Because they're very anti-technology, very anti-science. They're really a basic culture that uh, that you know stayed away from electricity and the and running water and the whole nine yards. Uh, but I, but since they're living in the middle of our world, I think some of that stuff's gonna gonna bleed over. They're gonna absorb some of it. Same thing with the American Indians. I mean, yeah, if you found, of course, you're never gonna find them because all all the American Indians now have been cordoned off into reservations. But if you went back into the 1800s and found a tribe that was living on the land hunting buffalo and all that fun stuff then yeah if you asked them what the sky was their their old ways would be the ways but now no i mean they they watch flat screen television shows and you know, drive cars and we we give them a monthly stipend most of them that's how that's how basically if you want to know what what, what they do on reservations we basically bought them off it's like yeah sorry for taking your country uh, here's a monthly check that's that's how we that's how we took them in the end. We're the the ones that lived in the end, we just put in reservations. We pay them literally every month. Pay them a pretty good chunk of money, and they're exempt from all our our major laws. So taxes and uh, so they can build casinos and they can operate uh, firework illegal firework stands and you know they get to get away with all that fun stuff. And why shouldn't they? I mean, for God's sakes, it was their country before we got here. Moving on. This one's called Questions. Mark, I have some questions about your take on the flat earth. One, if what you say is true, and what is the reason we have been lied to about the earth being a sphere instead of flat? What is to be gained? Uh, Watch flat earth clues. That's what I'm going to answer it with. If you don't know that, then I have no, what do you like, watch two seconds of the flat earth clues and then wrote me? Number two, if it is so easy to see that the earth is flat, why has it not been understood by the majority of the people? Where is it easy to see the earth is flat? Out of of the water? Sure. It's easy to see now because we have HD technology that can see far beyond what we should be able to see. But it wasn't easy up until uh, not even 10 years ago. 
So anyway, he continues on. It seems like it to be very expensive and for no purpose to make up all those fake pictures and stories rather than just admit the earth is flat. Yeah, he has not watched the clues. Watch the clues. That's from CWT. If you don't know why he would hide it, then you obviously have never fantasized about ruling the world and the rules of power. Because that'll that'll tell you exactly what's going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. This one's called, if you look for a digital model of a flat earth model. Okay. Odd title. Hey, Mark, I'm a flat earth supporter and I know the earth is flat, so this is nothing biased. I was listening to one of your shows and I heard the story about the server for skinning. And I know that you might use this as support for the flat earth case. Server for skinning, skinning, SK, I, I don't even know. Oh, 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 Jesus. Okay, he, he's a gaming reference. And okay, so he's, he's saying that basically when I when I was doing World of Warcraft, uh, that I got a, a realm first, not ser well, server first, yeah, but it's a realm first. Yeah, I got a realm, realm first, skinning, Pandaria, Stone Mall. So anyone that plays Warcraft, you know what I'm talking about. So that means realm first. Skinning is the trade, Pandaria was the expansion, and Stone Mall was the name of the server. This is for anyone that wants to look it up. So the World of Warcraft universe is a mirror to a geocentric model. They use it for their planets and worlds. But if you notice that while they represent other worlds, Azeroth included as a planet, in reality, their world is flat. Yes, I absolutely know that for a fact. Absolutely. Use flying and going. Go, use flying in Warcraft and go to a high place. And with the recent expansions, they allowed quite a long distance view. With a great video card, you can see from one major city to another. And guess what? It is flat. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Because programming, you you don't want to. It's easier if you program it on a perfectly flat plane. So with all the technology available and everything digital, it would be very easy for them to reproduce the geocentric model, but they can't. They must use the flat stationary model because the other one is simply impossible. The sky has a limit. Hey, Blizzard, do you firmament much? <laughs> it's funny. Uh, so if you haven't noticed it by now, because even though I became a flat earther four years ago, eh, probably three years ago, uh, I noticed this just now, Legion expansion, and I died laughing. Yep. Uh, this is all the proof you need. And if someone uh, asks the engineers, hey, dudes, why is our world flat? Kudos to the good work. God bless and keep up the good jobs. Sincerely. Theodore Garvalov. And, well, yeah, I mean, it does, does Warcraft prove it's a flat Earth? No, but it is the, the greatest game of all time and the longest running game of all time. And we're on year 13, which in it's, it's kind of like cat years. The video game world, I mean, 13 years in the video game world, that's, that's insane. It's never been done. No one's ever going to do it again. 13 years, is, it's, beyond, it's beyond the realm of possibility. But just because you build a computer world doesn't necessarily mean the world is flat, but it is an awful big coincidence, meaning life imitates life and art, art imitates life. It's people, the, the simulation world, whether you're building for entertainment or education for the military, they build flat worlds because, I mean, perfectly flat worlds, because it's easier. Programmers are lazy. You don't have to do curvature of the earth math algorithms if... You don't have to. If the characters, the people that are playing the game don't care or more more often don't notice, you don't build it. You just don't do it. You don't render anything. Kind of like a grand, another great game, of course, somebody mentioned to me recently, was uh, Grand Theft Auto, which I don't play because it's crime-based and I don't like, you know, I just don't like playing games where you're kill, you know, hurting innocent people. I never enjoyed the, the Grand Theft Auto concept. But I know I'm weird that way. Kind of a Boy Scout. But in that game, that, that's a, a great concept, and I was going to release one of those videos uh, I'm thinking of doing it this week, where they're talking about Grand Theft Auto, where you're down, you're running down one street, and everybody's running around doing busy things on one street, and you think that the rest of the world is just like that. But the, the point is, is that it's only rendered, it's only built because you're running down that street. You don't have to build the rest of the city because you're not in the rest of the city. You're just in that. Why, why would you build the rest of the city if your visual, your, your the, the rendering and the programming is only instanced for your field of view? That's all it is. I, I'm getting off on a technical thing. Let's let's get past that. This one's called YouTube compilation. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. Just 
finished watching this brilliant presentation. I better click on it to make sure I know what it is. Hey, it's there, hiding God with the biggest lie ever. It's up to uh, how many views? I can't even tell. 3,642,000? Is that about right? Yeah, that sounds about right. And let's see. Uh, I'm not new to this by any means, yet there were several interesting revelations brought up during the 11 segments. No GPS flights or the Southern Hemisphere oceans. Bit was great work. In fact, the entire three question segment was great. The Malaysian air missing plane is now all but forgotten, isn't it? Anything more advanced you could point me to would be appreciated, YouTube or otherwise. And I also wondered what triggered the NBA player's inside joke with the media on the Flat Earth last year. Many high-profile guys, Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, and others, were stating it in strange ways, being cryptic and all. Not your average conspiracies types, I would say, although there have been a few in sports over the years. Any ideas about this? For sure, you must be aware of it. Thanks in advance. All the best, AB. And yeah, you know what? I will mail him. But, uh, yeah, I, I love, by the way, when people find the, the They're Hiding God or Under the Dome or all the others, and then they'll write me and they'll say, hey, that's a really great video. You done anything else since? Never even went to my main channel. Never even never even stumbled across it. It's like, yeah, I've done a few things. Pushing a thousand videos now on that YouTube channel. It's a lot of videos. I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of promos in there. But I made a lot of, a lot of things, and, and hopefully by the time I get to them, hopefully they – they typed in flat earth into YouTube. You would think their natural instinct would be go into YouTube, type in flat earth and just start clicking, start clicking. Hopefully they didn't just stop with my stuff, hopefully, but I'll, I'll email them and send them a link to my thing anyway, just for the heck of it. This one is called flushing water question. Hey, Mark, just had a question from a very angry and closed minded coworker. He wants to know why the water in the Southern hemisphere spins opposite from the Northern hemisphere. I'm new to this whole concept with an open mind. I'm learning every day. Thank you for any info you can provide. Love what you do. Keep up the great work. Brian Severson. Hey, yeah, Brian, anyone that mentions that I point to, and uh, I don't care if he's a not, he doesn't believe in flat earth or not. There's a big YouTube channel out there called, I mean, big millions and millions of subscribers called Smarter Every Day. And he did a simultaneous experiment. I think he called it the toilet flushing experiment where, and you can look it up. You'll know when you hit the channel because it's called Smarter Every Day. And where he did a simul, it was one of the best objective simultaneous scientific method experiments I've seen along these lines, where he had a guy simultaneously with identical equipment in the Southern Hemisphere. So he did a kid's waiting pool, a custom built kid's waiting pool, perfectly level with another pool down in South or Australia, I think. And they had a special valve in the center to where it was going to drain from the center. They waited, you know, the water was the same temperature in both sides. I think it was the same temperature, pretty close. And then to make sure that the water was not disturbed, they let it sit for hours and hours. And then to make sure that, because they had to see which way it was going to spin, they put, instead of putting like boats at the top to disturb the water, they used eyedropper with food coloring and put uh, north, south, east, or west on the, on the kid's waiting pool. And then they pulled the drains simultaneously. They were sitting there on the phones at the exact same time. And there's a smarter everyday version down in Australia. And what they determined was the the spin was so unbelievably gradual that he he was saying, look, as far as I'm concerned, the spin doesn't exist. The the clockwise versus counterclockwise, it doesn't exist. It's just a um, it's just a bias, meaning whatever way you're putting the water towards the drain, that's the way it's going to go. I mean, technically, you go to any kitchen sink, you move your faucet to the left or to the right, and you can get that water to spin clockwise or counterclockwise. Does that mean you're in the southern or northern hemisphere? No, it's just the direction of the water. Now, where the myth came from about the toilet spinning in the opposite directions, I don't know. I mean, that could be another conspiracy on its own. But the test that he did, and remember, he is not a flat earther. He comes, he did it multiple times. He said, look, as far as I can tell, this flat, and he's a science-based guy. You know, that's all he does is, is do cool little scientific experiments. He said that that's whole spinning thing is a complete myth. So there you go. In fact, maybe, you know what, maybe I'll send it to him in case he's not listening to this. I got a lot of homework after this one to do. Okay, this one's called What the Ocean May Prove. Hi, Mark. I've emailed a couple times just looking to connect with someone in the community. 
I get it. You're very busy. I understand there's no possible way you can answer all the emails or phone calls. Never tried to call because I figured that's an even greater long shot. Anyway, I've been into the flat earth for just over a year now and I'm most definitely a flat earther. It has changed my life in so many positive ways. It's unbelievable. Only problem is it's next to impossible to share this great discovery with anyone that is not figured out for themselves. So I'm left yearning to talk to someone, anyone, about Flat Earth. Anyways, what do you think about looking into the ocean for proofs? I don't have any formal education behind this, but I'm a surfer, <laughs> okay, and have spent hundreds of hours in the ocean. That's a good start. For example, thinking about waves and swell energy, one finds it very hard to believe energy could travel up the so-called curvature without completely losing all steam when we are told swells are generated from a storm some great distance away. I could be way off on this, but there is one thing Flat Earth proves over and over again. It is that we have been trained th to throw common sense out the window and believe in some magical force that just seems to make anything hard or impossible possible. Just think of all the possibilities under the surface that could help the community. Let me know what you think, and thank you for your time, passion, and heart when it comes to the Flat Earth. Have a great rest of your day. Scott from Encinitas. I think that's California, right? Encinitas, pretty sure. And yeah, it's when it comes to energy and waves, that's a whole other thing, because uh, and you know, energy just travels through the water. Uh, any doubt of that? Look at tsunamis. The energy generated from a, an earthquake thousands of miles away travels. The energy travels through the water faster than the speed of sound. Uh, now you could argue that on a globe, of course, you know that it would travel differently than it would on a flat surface. But w when you're talking about swells, that's usually just energy transfer. So you don't have to necessarily worry about that. But hey, you're a surfer. You're thinking outside the box. Appreciate the email. Regardless. Okay, this one's called Flat Earth. Hey, Mark. My name is Heather. Quick question here about the flight casino part seven, about how you can't fly straight from one country to another because of the flat earth map. Those two countries are on opposite ends of the earth. So I just got to thinking, like, what is someone by themselves just set sail from that one country to the other via water and no government involved. Round Earth speaking, the distance isn't too far at all from the picture I remember I seen in your video. So why hasn't anyone done that? If they did, they would surely either A, reach that other country or B, reach the end of the Earth. I find it hard to believe no one has done that yet. Good point. When it comes to ships, uh, they're, doing, they're going by the stars or they're going by GPS now. And GPS, as you know, not to steal a, ref, a matrix reference, the GPS works for the system. It works for the matrix. The GPS is going to tell you kind of where you want to go. Uh, remember the, the GPS, that's DOD, Department of Defense, United States Military. And when you get out there, it's, you know, it's going to. And plus, I also think the stars are going to kind of tell you where you want to go. From what I understand, all the old ships did tons of course corrections all the time. But we'll get into that a different day. All right, this one's called, do we have time? Yes, we do. This one's called, I have Flat Earth Clues German TV 13-minute reportage for you. Oh, okay. Hi, Mark. I read the comments on YouTube about that hit piece in the Galileo show, so I gave you an insider perspective to it. I'm a freelance TV sound guy here in Germany. I do all kinds of shows. Galileo used to be a regular client for many years, and I worked with Haro Fulgrab. Fulgrab? Fulgrab. The guy who was at the conference personally. Yeah, I think I, I met that guy. Haro? Haro. I can assure you they have done a lot worse. They did in the past on other topics. I think someone in their crew is a flat earther already. One, look at the images they chose. Felix Bumgarter's jump, fisheye outsider shoot with a crazy curved earth. Next, cut serious to NASA footage showing earth from the ISS and now showing a moderate curved earth. This is instantly debunking the credibility of the images as proof and the exact curvature of the earth and the overvoiced text. This makes one viewer's mind wonder. What he's telling me is because the, the piece was completely in German. He's kind of breaking it down because you never know. I mean, you're watching the, the text or you're, you're watching all the, the stuff online and uh, the video and you, you don't know what they're saying behind the scenes unless you know German, which he does. Two, the show is normally a space NASA ESA propaganda instrument. Look at the name, Galileo. They aired a couple of long stories about Mars mission, asteroids, and all the latest BS in the few weeks. So they laid a foundation in the viewer's opinion on space in the last weeks where I was expecting a serious hit piece, like saying you're all mentally ill and shredding flat earth into pieces and totally destroying it for the viewer to even Google about it. They didn't do that. They just made the viewer 
like head shaking with a soft smile. They just made Flat Earth as bad looking as they need it to be to get approved by the higher ups who decide about the stuff that gets aired. That's true. In the end, the, the, the film teams that were out there, they still got to run the final pieces through the producers. Uh, all in all, it's a good thing for Flat Earth. I think it was the first time ever that Flat Earth was on a major television show in Germany. The show is well respected for running. It's been running 15 years. They are very rare. That's very rare in the TV business here. And this is all aired all over Europe via satellite, smiley face. So you got a lot of exposure in Europe with this show alone. And as you said, that's good for Effie. Best regards, Mike. Thank you, Mike. It's good to know that we have friends in Germany. Of course, we have friends all over the place. But it was good to know because I spent some time with that, that team. Uh, and they interviewed quite a few people. And uh, you couldn't have gone to that conference and thought that everyone there was crazy. You couldn't. All right, I think I have a minute... Yeah, I have a minute before the break, so let's do this one real quick. This is called Flat Earth, Flat World, and I believe. Hi there, Mark. It's me again, Paulo. Hope you are doing great. I will go straight to the point by saying that I do not understand the concept of the fourth wall. This is because of the rule that cannot break, the same rule that applies to television set show that never saw the fourth wall. Why there is no fourth wall. When you can, please do shed some light on this for me. Thanks so much for your time, Paulo. And hopefully Paulo understands that the it's a television term, the fourth wall in any major television set. If it's an artificial set, if you're not doing a reality show, there is no fourth wall. You only have three sets because the fourth wall is where the camera and the directors and the makeup people and the catering team is. That's where the fourth wall is like Cheers. When you're looking at the bar of Cheers, the television show or any any sit situation comedy, it's there's no fourth wall. That's where the cameras are. You can never turn the camera around and show the fourth wall because it doesn't exist. And that's what NASA has done time and time again. All right, that's it for this segment. We will do um, last segment here in um, about three minutes. So stick around. <laughs> is Truth Frequency Radio. No hate, no hype, no fear. Real people, real radio. Welcome back to Strange World Part 4 4. I'm Mark Sargent. And yeah, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. And I was just looking through, looking through the, the Flat Earth headlines. Normally I would do some Flat Earth news, but honestly, I'm just going to try to crank through the emails as fast as I can. But I, I got to mention this one because Bill Nye came out on another science show recently and was going after Kyrie Irving. And, and oh no, he's going after rapper B.O.B. I was a little surprised he didn't go after Kyrie Irving. But he's going after rapper B.O.B. for the whole Flat Earth thing. And uh, Bill Nye, again, it, it just staggers me that it shows the the laziness of the media. I know people are lazy in general anyway, but the laziness of the media, the reason why Bill Nye is on on television uh, is because the, he looks like a nerd. That's it. I mean, remember, he's got a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, which he abandoned almost immediately for acting in the early 90s. He got on a local didn't even go down to California. Did a, a local Seattle comedy sketch team called Almost Live. I know this because I, I was living in Seattle at the time. I know Bill Nye. I know who this guy is. I grew up with this guy. And I mean, it was sort of funny. Yeah, sure. And he did this little skit. He didn't even come up with a skit. Bill Nye, the sky, science guy. It was used on Almost Live. And the Disney decided they would turn it into sort of a little educational thing. And they turned it and they ran his thing for about five, five years, five years, six years. And then they syndicated it. And that's how people know him. You know, he, he, he's not like he was on Sesame Street or Electric Company. It was a separate thing by Disney, Bill Nye, the science guy. And, and quite a few people grew up with him doing his science experiments for whatever reason. And 
th- that's the only re- he looks like a nerd. He put a lab coat on him. You put a bow tie on him. He's got he's he's tall. He's thin. He's got angular features. He looks like, like he could have been straight out of the casting of Revenge of the Nerds or any other nerd movie you could ever think of. He is the quintessential scientist. And the reason why mainstream media put him on television is because he's a safe bet. No, he doesn't have a master's degree in anything, but he talks better on camera than your average scientist would that you drag at MIT or Stanford or wherever else, you know, what other good science things are out there. And because you, those guys are very, very dry. Actual scientists are horrible on camera. They give one or two sentence answers. They're very, very specific. These guys only, they're kind of like computers. They only spit out what you ask them. And the media doesn't like dealing with those guys. And, and Bill Nye has a great track record for putting them on camera. And he says, hey, give us your opinion on climate change. Give us your opinion on the Mars rover or this asteroid or whatever it is. And even though he has he is not qualified to speak about any of these things and people say, well, Mark, you don't have a bachelor's degree in in, uh, in mechanical engineering. And I go, no, I don't. Or I say I don't have a master's degree in anything. It's like, no, I don't. But I don't get asked on television to talk about the Mars rover. I don't. Or quantum physics. Why is he sitting next to Neil deGrasse Tyson? I mean, Neil deGrasse Tyson, even though he hasn't published crap. Yeah, he's got a few books out there, but he hasn't published anything from a scientific standpoint for uh, ever, I don't think. But he's the point is he's at least got his PhD finally, and he, you know you can put him on a panel. Bill and I should not be on a panel. So I'm sorry, I got to rant about Bill every once in a while because I've got this funny feeling one of these days uh, a flat earther is going to go up against Bill and I. I don't know why, other than the media is just going to let him walk into this ambush and he's going to get crushed. You can want to put an astronaut in front of a flat earther, that's fine, because they'll just keep their mouths shut, like Terry Verst did with me. But you put Bill Nye up there, he's not going to know what the hell is going on. It's going to be like Stanton Friedman when I talk to him. He's going to sleepwalk his way through it and go, well, you just drive to the edge and take a picture. And we'll just hit him with so many facts and factoids that he's not going to know what to do. So hopefully somebody, you know, somebody write to Bill Nye's team and say, hey, look, I'd like to get a debate with you. Eventually, I don't think he'll do it, not unless he gets paid. It's true, though. If you got paid for it, if you got a fee, I almost guarantee you'd do it. Anyway, let's get back to the emails, shall we? Because this is the last segment for emails. This one's called Message from a Flat Earther in Scotland. And I'm out of respect for Dell. I am not going to do a Scottish accent. I'm not going to do it. I, I don't think I could do an, a decent one anyway. I love, I love people that can do decent accents, uh, but I can't do Scottish. I know a girl that can do a really great Scottish accent. Uh, it's called, uh, hi, Mark. I've been watching the flat earth videos and find them convincing. I'm a retired sea captain. I think a good thing to put in your videos is if you explain the flat earth as a dish with the ice wall around it, if the ice melts in Antarctica due to volcanoes under the ice melting the ice and not the weather in the surface of the ice and the level of the water will rise and flood the bowl. Hmm. I got this over to some people that laughed when I said the earth could be flat. They went quiet it made them think. Keep the information coming. Regards, Jim from Scotland in the United Kingdom. Very welcome, Jim. And, well, I'm going to keep doing this until they find a way to stop me. Hopefully they won't. We'll see. Uh, it's we transfer. Nope. Nope. Not going to do that one. This one's called Thank You. Mark, I recently found and subbed your channel and just wanted to say thank you. I started researching Flat Earth about a year ago, and I keep coming back to your YouTube channel. I must say your content is amazing, easy to listen to, and incredibly inspiring. Up until now, I've been hesitant to truly follow anyone in the Flat Earth community until I was ready to commit. I just wanted to drop you a quick email to show my appreciation. I'm subbed to you under YouTube channel name Drone Wolf Media. That's a great name. So you'll know who is commenting. Have a great day and keep up the good work. Thank you, Chris. Welcome, Chris. This one's uh, called Stars of the Bible in Heaven. Mark Deere, ooh, like this. The ancient names of the stars and constellations combine to tell the main themes of the Bible. They beautifully tell us of God's love and caring for us and powerfully show the eventual destruction of Satan by Jesus. Study of this topic gives a special blessing and insight seldom found by the fortunate few. Old books in my library on this subject, The Heavens Declare by William D. Banks and God's Voice in the Stars by Kenneth C. Fleming. Heard you first on Coast to Coast. 
joined your pay site. Listen to everything on your free site, researcher researching Alice. Very welcome, Alice. Glad I could help. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, in your video, They Hide God with the Biggest Lie Ever, Flat Earth Clues, published December 1st, 2015. I did not see the links you mentioned. Uh, yeah, it's because it's not my channel. I understand about comments. Would like to check out the links. You can send a list of links reference. I would like to do some more research. Thank you, Gilbert Rex. And Gilbert's going to be one of those guys. I'm going to email after the show is over and send him a link to my actual channel. It's amazing. I mean, millions of people. I mean, it's best I can count, what, seven, eight, ten million people that don't even know I have a channel. Hopefully, they looked around Flat Earth and found my actual channel. But some people, they just went to the, the many Flat Earth clues. I mean, that's great and all, but they never actually know, know that I did anything else. This one's called The National Debt and Flat Earth. Greetings, Mark. I wonder how much of our $20 trillion debt is connected to hiding where we live. Probably quite a bit with interest. If we consider the budget shortfalls in the past 30 years, the numbers simply don't add up. Perhaps this has been the cost associated with hiding our world from us and paying off enough people to keep the secret. Regards, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, very possible. Sure, I mean, it's only money. I mean, what's, what's money compared to the stability of any civilization? This one's called Harmony PDF Request and a few questions. Hi, Mark. Thank you for your flat earth clues and your tenacity in sharing the truth about our enclosed world. As a Christian, it has made perfect sense out of the Genesis account of how God created this home for his creation. I stalk you on YouTube. That's awesome. I, I'd love some more stalkers. Just a few questions I have. Is Bill Nye po – see, I didn't even know he was going to talk about Bill Nye. Is Bill Nye possibly related to turtles? <laughs> Good. I don't know if it's his long neck or how he retreats into his flat earthers or ignorant turtle shell. That makes me wonder. Neil deGrasse Tyson only has two things going for him. One, people like sarcastic people. True. I almost, in fact, my, before, before my uh, flat, it's flat license plate. Oh, by the way, I got to mention that. Anyone that has an it's flat, it's flat license plate, Will you please send me the pictures of it if you haven't done it or whatever flat earth license plate you have in your car? Because I, there was two people at the conference that were sh they showed it to me on the phone. They said, oh, look, I know you want to be kind of shy, but it's like can't be that shy. What, you want to just drive around with a flat earth license plate, but you don't want me to show it on the Internet? Come on, send it to me if you've got one or if you registered for one. I will, I will put the, the paper version or the digital version up for a while anyway and, until you decide whether or not you're going to keep it. But if you have a flat earth license plate, Please send it to me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Uh, anyway, what else does this guy say? Two, most people do not think. Isn't that the truth? The lowest common denominator, the troglodytes, the mouth breathers. Whew. It's pretty bad out there. That's all for now. I appreciate everything you do for the community. Keep it up sincerely. Cheryl from Muncie, Indiana. Well, that's nice. All right, this one's called Conspiracy YouTube. Mark, maybe the dome has, was made by the atmosphere that was already there. Then all they do is send up darts and spray the, the everywhere with some sort of composite epoxy resin type matter. And boom, chemical reaction takes place where said gases are solidify it. If anything breaches it, think of it as a run flat tire. Hmm. A crappy solution is a solution still better than no solution. They still believe that to this day. Ha ha ha. People being so dumb and deluded, we should be worried about it's been too long since people actually thought for themselves and do what's right without persuasion and manipulation. And for this, I'm really sad. Together, we will find a way, but only together can we do it. Peace, brother. And that's from, who the heck is this from? Matt. Thanks, Matt. All right. This one's called, um, what's this called? Congrats. Hi, Mark. I thoroughly enjoyed your interview with the RFE woman. Apart from her introduction, you sounded relaxed. Possibly one scotch relaxed. No, I, I don't drink that much when I'm when I'm doing that. In fact, I rarely drink. You'll, you'll know because you'll hear a glass clinking with ice in it. But nice and light with your handling of our topic. Compared to you, a lot of guys, uh, my transition into Flat Earth was easy. You guys showed me evidence. It didn't disturb my aesthetic viewpoint. I'm sorry, not – is that aesthetic? Atheistic atheistic viewpoint one jot 
When I see non-CGI of a creator or his offspring plus evidence, I'll be aboard whether you want me there or not. However, I have my own speculation around the Tower of Babel. The mythical tale may come from the rockets trying to penetrate your dome with disastrous consequences. I happen to agree with your speculation of former civilizations because of evidence uh, like a gold link chain found in a lump of coal that possibly existed umpteen years ago. I also believe that even to this day, we couldn't build the Great Pyramid in 20 years. No, I think it was like 30, as apparently the slaves did it. And thank you for your efforts on your behalf, on our behalf. Kind regards, Len. You're very welcome, Len. This one's called Flat Earth Peace. Mark, I remember that sweet song from the early 70s or late 60s, Let There Be Peace on Earth and Let It Begin With Me. I'm new here in the flat earth scene, but old as a truth seeker, I've been listening and watching all sides in and out of the community. Here are some of my comments. Mark Sargent has a gift to talk with the media on their level, not insulting or contending with them in a nasty way. My mother taught me, you get more friends with honey than throwing sand in their faces. <laughs> You're mixing, you're mixing things there. Okay, first it's more better with more more bees or more flies with honey than vinegar. But I I'm gonna use that now. More friends with with honey than throwing sand in their faces. Oh my god, that's great. Uh, Mark has said he teaches flat Earth 101 or flat Earth for dummies. This is true. He is the low level gateway to introduce the masses to our new or old Earth news. Others have been at it long and are better with facts and figures, but you must start out with milk before you give these newbies meat. Hmm. Well, I don't think he screwed that one up. I uh, enjoy Mark's easy social ways as he disarms the media, opening up new channels of communications with larger reach. God bless Mark for taking the heat and doing what many others refuse to do. That is to engage the media in a respectful way, expanding the opportunities to reach more people. Is he perfect? No. But nobody is. Even the Christian Savior was not only rejected by the world, but in the end, by many of his followers. When Jesus helped, oh, seriously, you're going to do that to me? Uh, when Jesus helped and healed people, many said that he did it by the power of the devil. Some even called him Satan. Judge, not least, you be judged by that same type of biased thinking. Let us unite together upon the flat earth and knock the hot air of the globe, not each other. Peace out, your new friend, Charlie. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, Charlie. Good to know. All right, this one's called... Uh, this one's pretty long, but I think I can read it. Yeah, it's called Miles Mathis, Total Hatchet Job on Gravity. Uh, let's see. Miles Mathis rips the guts out of the conventional gravitational theory and once again exposes it as m nothing more than a hodgepodge of bogus baloney with zero basis in real scientific facts. Gravity has long been the greatest mystery in physics, and still is. For Newton, gravity was a force at a distance. This was inherently mysterious, as he admitted, since there was no casual mechanism. Isn't that the truth? Einstein provided gravity with new mathematics, but he also failed to provide a mechanism. Einstein denied that gravity was a force at all. For him, eh, sorry, Went back to my main screen for a second. Uh, for him, it was simply a new geometry, curved space. This was novel, except that it failed to explain how mass curved space. The mechanism was still missing, force or no force. Some contemporary physicists believe that gravitons may be the force-carrying particles, but they have no theory to explain the force at a quantum level. Not only have they been unable to find a quantum mathematics that includes gravity, but they have utterly failed to explain or even to attempt to explain how trading particles can mechanicalistically, mechanic Mechanicalistically, is that a word? Cause an attractive force. A repulsion can easily be explained by a bombardment for an instance, but attraction is impossible. To explain in any analogous way, <clears throat> excuse me, well, as an example, if you throw Nerf balls at a balloon, it will move away. But try getting the balloon to move towards you by doing anything with a Nerf ball. The balloon and you can absorb or eject Nerf balls in a billion different ways, but none of them will make the balloon come to you. Another problem with contemporary gravity theory is it contradicts itself. Often the same physicists who are seeking the graviton are also telling you that curved space requires no explanation of curvature. 
things just naturally travel curved trajectories, they say. That is the default trajectory, not the straight line. If you point out that things do not travel curved trajectories outside of gravitational fields, they reply that weak gravitational fields permeate the universe. And if you insist that weaker fields provide straighter lines, they, present, they pretend this is not a problem. They pre pretend that this does not imply that massive objects must affect the space around them, and this implies that they must affect it in some mechanical way. They pretend that a new geometry is the casual SUI, the cause of itself. And if you ask why they pursue the graviton, you are told it is not to fortify general relativity, it is to construct gravity waves, which is true in the sense that a discovered graviton would undercut general relativ relativity, not fortify it. For then, the cause of the curvature would not be geometry alone, it would be the force carried by the graviton. Beyond that, I'm almost done with this, guys. The mechanics of the graviton is one of the greatest absurdities in 20th century physics. Most physicists ignore any mention of mechanics in regard to gravity or QED since they appear to recognize it for the farce that it is. The proposed theories that have been embarrassing that it is best to pretend the mechanics does not exist at the quantum level. As an example, Baum said in 1951, if we imagine that a planet can absorb quanta only, when they are returning to the sun, we see that an inward force is produced by an enormous number of tiny impulses. To propose such a thing is to beg about 10 fundamental questions. The first being these. One, why would gravitons re return to the sun? Two, how far would they go before they were turned around? Three, it would require a force to turn them, would it not? What would we call this force? Gravity two? That's good. Four, don't we need a quantum to mediate this new force also? Graviton tons? <laughs> Awesome. All mechanical explanations of attraction have hit uh, a reductio, reductio ad absurdum. Grating at throw Latin at me. It is because attraction is not a mechanical postulate. Attraction cannot be explained mechanically. Attraction is a result, not a force. Awesome. Thank you for that. That's from Jim. Oh, please let me my first name, Jim. Okay, good. Okay, what else we got? We got time for a few more before we close this thing out. This one's called Hi, Mark. Uh, hi, Mark. Just want to leave you a quick email. My name is Ruben. I live in Amsterdam where I am a co-owner of a software company, Napkin. We make applications for restaurants. Oh, that's cute. It's called Napkin. Uh, it's, and it's spelled N-A-P-P, -P, so like app, but nap. In my daily life, I am a lot on the road. I listen to your shows and, for example, Globusters. As of the end of 2014, I am looking into Flat Earth. And as everybody, I tried to debunk it Firth. Firth. Yesterday, I had a long drive home and was listening to your interview with ZDF, I believe it was, and heard you talk about why nobody is stopping Flat Earth as active as you would expect. As you were explaining that you think it is to cover up something bigger, and I think you might be right on that one, it would be very easy to cover up the topic on YouTube and Google. Yes. I agree. I strongly believe that flat earth is leading us somewhere. And the one thing we have to look at in that retrospect is the electrical universe. Also probably true. I think it is not questionable anymore that the sun and the moon are electrical in nature. The moon is its own light source. I did the temperature test on moonlight several times. And furthermore, the sun and the moon seem to be projected and not physical 3d objects. There are multiple tests uh, by Iru from Globusters that prove, prove our sun we perceive is not fiscal and seems to be a projection bounced off the dome like structure our fascia sum seems to be moving outside the dome and the lensing effect of our atmosphere takes care of the projection everybody sees his or own our sis wow sees his or her own sun and moon much like you see your own rainbow there are even a lot of experiments which prove that in this manner there can be uh, a 24-hour sun in the arctic I would love to discuss this in more detail one day. For now, love your shows and talks and keep up the good work. Love from Holland, Ruben Burkhout. Very welcome, Burkhout. I love the napkin thing. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. This one's called Call for Stronger Evidence and an Idea to Gauge Planet Distances. Hi, Mark. Lots of focus Lots of out-of-focus star videos about, which I have shown to be an effect in the atmosphere, reproducible with any light source, 
in this new four minute video, okay? But this may actually be useful since the planets do not display as much of an effect. Planets in the moon display very little of this shimmer compared to the stars. Since we can get the effect from any light source, this would suggest that the stars are further away, more at most, than the planets which show less of the effect. Hmm. This could actually be quite useful and possibly even used to measure or estimate distances. Feel free to use my videos as you wish should you ever want to, I will be looking further into this. I hope it may spark some ideas for you as well. Very West Bishop. <laughs> Long night. Very best wishes. Flat Max UK. All right, let's do this one. Could this be the one I end on? Yeah, it could be. Let's try it. This one's called Encouragement. Mark, I know that you've been on the front line since the beginning, but don't give up. The man on point in a patrol is the one that will usually take most of the fire during a firefight. You have been that man. You opened up Flat Earth to me because you were one of the first people I listened to. You have been right also because since no one from the mainstream has stepped up to challenge us, we turn on ourselves. I'm a Christian, and of the things that have always been said is that Christians can and do turn on their own. Isn't that the truth? Flat Earth seems to be the same. Here is a scripture to encourage you. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That's Matthew 5, verse 10 through 16. In the very end, don't give up, never surrender. Uh, never surrender, I think, is from Galaxy Quest with uh, Tim Allen. <laughs> All right, let's, do I have time for one more? I, I, I'd love to get one more here. Uh, yeah, let's get one more, and then we'll we'll wrap this thing up. I'd love to end on a biblical thing, but uh, I, I, there's still so many emails i got to grab. I mean, this one's from three or four weeks ago. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I've been watching some of your YouTube stuff and very interesting. It is needed. I wonder, though, if Russia and America fired nuclear weapons up to the sky over four years, but this would not have penetrated the shield dome. I am now getting into all the lies we've been told over the years and would like your help to understand more. Ryan Somerville from Scotland. And no, Ryan, no, they tried for, for four years and the first three shots, honestly, they, they knew they weren't going to break through it after the first three shots. If you look up the track record, at least the, the, the documents they released, the first three shots were in the megaton range and if, and then they switched to lower kiloton range. You know, I think most of the shots after that were under hundred kilotons and you're wondering what kilotons and megatons, uh, 20 megatons is what was used. I'm sorry. Wow. 20 kilotons, what was, that means thousands of tons, were used on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan by the United States. A megaton is a million tons. And they were shooting upwards of, I think, three megatons at the sky. They couldn't break through it. So after the first three shots, they're like, well, our biggest stuff isn't going to do it. Anyway, thank you for everyone that wrote in. And uh, remember, if you want to email your stuff, you can send it to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Uh, and that's it for this show. So we'll call this one good and, um, come back next week. If you want, I will be here. Uh, same flat time, same flat channel. Thanks guys. Stay flat.